a very good morning. Thank you uh, for your attendance, and it's uh, and also thank you to the family for inviting me here to Paris. It's not uh, difficult to get me uh, to Paris for any particular reason, so I'm really happy to be here. Uh, this story began about five years ago when I got a call from an investor in Silicon Valley, and they asked me to join a digital advertising company called Amobi. And I joined as an independent board director. And uh, for two years, I went to the board meetings, and I continuously suggested to the, the CEO and the management team how they would improve the company. And eventually, the board got tired of my complaining and asked me to become the CEO. So I became the CEO of the company and spent three years running it. And the first thing I did when I joined the company was I looked at the digital advertising uh, market and how much was being spent by each category. And the luxury market was a huge spender in advertising globally, but in digital and in mobile advertising wasn't spending any money with the company. So I asked the salespeople and the product people, why is that the case? And they told me the luxury market just simply doesn't get it. These guys don't get technology. And I believed them incorrectly. And today what I want to talk to you about is how I think that the technology industry has got it incorrect and how we have been serving technology to the luxury market in, a, in an incorrect fashion over the last number of years and not actually listening to the requirements of the luxury market at all. So today I'm going to show you how I think we can change and revolutionize the world of luxury in an online fashion. And so for 25 years, you've had two sort of natives inside a company. You had the digital natives, as Richard uh, quickly pointed out. It's not a good label, but that's what they were called. And then you had the retail natives. And both of these people were fighting for budget, where the digital guys were saying to the retail guys, you guys simply don't get it. And the retail guys were saying to the digital guys, you guys simply don't get it. And when you look at the, the, the requirements, the retail marketing guys were labeled as traditional and conservative and the digital folks were labeled as innovative and creative. The requirement that came from retail marketers was very, very simple. They said, look, luxury is an experience. And we have spent all of this money and all of this resource in building our brand and building our look and feel and building our brand culture and our brand values. And we just need to be able to express that. And our way of expressing that is to build beautiful stores the cathedral that uh, Richard mentioned uh, uh, from Apple, the retail store where people could go and experience the brand. And digital marketers really have uh, failed to keep pace because when you look at the store and the beautiful Bell & Ross store, and this is how it looks online, something doesn't add up. And the numbers don't lie. There's a massive, massive opportunity um, uh, at stake here where there's a big missed opportunity for online commerce for luxury. And I think it's time for a change, and let's see an example. This is the Bell & Ross Boutique in Paris. It looks beautiful. This is Bell & Ross as it's represented online. 2D, really doesn't express the brand look and feel. So how can the technology industry actually, with any honesty of thought, ask the luxury market to embrace this, okay? It's not reflective of the brand. There's no e-commerce. There's no ability to get the person to the store where you can upsell them new products. There's no digital spend. And it simply doesn't represent the brand look and feel. So what we're going to show you today is a demo of uh, Bell & Ross store. I want to uh, introduce Roberto, the founder of a company called Panotech. Roberto, maybe if you could come to the, the, the computer here. And we'll show you a demo as to how a brand may express their look and feel. Just to give you a precursor of what we're going to show you, this is the entrance to the uh, uh, Bell & Ross store online. The technology involved here is actually to put a robot into the store. The robot has five cameras in its head. It takes 360 images of the, uh, of the store. And then the brand's look and feel that's in the store is then completely replicated online. So you have exactly the same look and feel and experience as if you walked into the store. And uh, you know, one thought that uh, came to me when I saw this technology was, why the hell do we actually go and build websites instead of just shooting the store? 
in a luxury marketplace, if you invest so much in a Dior store, or so much in a Bell & Ross store, or so much in a Louis Vuitton store, why not just physically represent that online? Where you can see the exact look and feel of the retail store, you can go to the shelf, click on the product, you can buy it if you want to buy it, or, as there's a lot of requirements from retail, uh, luxury brands, you can get a lead and send the person to the store. It also works on mobile, and now we'll see a demo. So that's where I end, and Roberto begins, because now all the risk is on poor Roberto here, because he's going to give a live demo of his product. So maybe, Roberto, if you take a seat. Uh, he's from Spain, but that's, that's, there's, there's nothing. Uh, that's okay. It's okay. He's very welcome. It's okay. It's okay. Excellent. Okay, so what we're showing you here is the Mandarin Gallery. This is a beautiful mall um, which hosts um, several luxury brands downtown in Singapore. And what Trevor was trying to explain with slides is what we're going to show you here on this live demo. Basically, you know, we... You know, we built this company with the main objective to change and revolutionize the world of luxury online. And we spent several years building a very comprehensive platform, both hardware and software platform, that allows us to create very unique and luxurious virtual destinations for luxury brands online. Thanks to our technology, we can provide, we help luxury brands reach out to the end user digitally by providing a seamless transition from the street level into the mall. This is the kind of, the, the, the kind of uh, quality that we provide. This is a photograph of this um, Cavalli campaign. Yeah? So we can continue to navigate. And again, it's not only the high definition panoramic imagery that we provide, but also all the different rich media elements that we integrate within the panoramic context. Yeah? So for example, here you have the interactive floor plan. <clears throat> Each and every blue dot is a hotspot that you can click directly on that. And it allows you to navigate the entire indoor space seamlessly. So let's go ahead and take the elevator up to the second floor. Notice how the floor plan changes automatically. And we can continue to navigate the second floor and go into each and every individual um, boutique so now, we have taken the elevator up. Let's go ahead and take the escalator back down so we can go into the Bell & Ross Boutique. Here we are, the storefront. See how quickly, um, how quickly we can navigate the entire indoor space. And one thing is that we have created a platform. There we go. Basically, uh, as part of the rich media elements that we integrate within the panoramic context, we also embed high definition videos. You can see here on the Bell and Ross, very high zoom ability. As we pan around, you can hear how the sound fades away. Yeah. You can go and visit all the boutiques, or we can go and see the sexiest part of this particular demo, which is the watch display where we combine the digital and the physical aspect. In other words, all these different watches that you see in the background inside the watch display were there when we captured this imagery. But then we went ahead and integrated the digital aspect, which is what we call the product flyout. <clears throat> in Trevor's words, he, he characterized it as the, as the ad unit, which can act as the e-commerce store or act as the gateway for um, basically generating in-store lead traffic to basically invite the end users into the boutique. Yeah. Now, one of the things that we're doing now is <clears throat> these particular flyouts are, um, are static. One of the things that we're doing now to add a, an additional layer of uh, immersiveness in engaging with the end user is we're creating these very interactive, um, dynamic flyouts where basically the products, in this case for watches, they get deconstructed or disassembled, rather. And um, with the aim to add, you know, always continue to innovate and add additional layers of, uh, of immersiveness. Great. So thank you, Roberto. Very good demo. I think there's a couple of things here that is pretty impressive. First of all, the production of the, uh, uh, this, uh, this demo for a luxury brand is sort of a 15-day period. So from 
uh, releasing new products into the store to getting it into full digital, sort of a 15-day time frame. I know other 3D companies that it, it takes almost eight to 10,000 lines of code to actually code something, a product like this in, in 3D, whereas in this case situation, it's literally the camera technology and then taking the images and putting the images back together again. And I would foresee a world where for luxury brands or for any retail brand for that matter, um, when you release new products or you move into a new season, you just effectively put the robot into your store. The robot shoots your store, it gets transmitted online, and then your store is absolutely 100% replicated with the exact look and feel. The other thing that's interesting, I think, here as well, is that for some customers, we have been using this technology to do 3D-based advertising. Uh, so for some watch companies and also for some fashion companies, where the ad becomes the store and the store becomes the ad. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm hopefully uh, help you guys uh, go back on time. Thank you very much. I am wondering, to be honest, um, I feel like, I mean, it's much more better than any uh, Google Street View. Of course, it has nothing to be compared with. But still, like, do the people want to visit uh, a mall, for instance, in terms of usage? Do, does it work like that? Okay, there's information gatherers, people who want to gather information around a product. I think it's very suitable for this. Uh, there's those who want to make a direct purchase. Mm -hmm. If you want to make a direct purchase, you may go directly to the store, but you may information gather on this. And then, of course, there's window shopping and aspirational buyers. So I think this product, I think, caters for the first two Absolutely. Those who are aspirational buyers, maybe your future consumers of your brand, and then secondly, information gatherers, because there's no other way of really touching and feeling the product. And I think what's unique about it as well is that you can actually get a QR code or a coupon directly to your phone that you can then bring into the store. I spent a Saturday afternoon in, uh, in Tory Birch in Singapore. I sat there for, for three hours watching the interaction. Uh, inside the store. And what I discovered was that Tory Burch has so many products in their SKU categories, it takes almost 25 to 30 minutes for the shop assistant to even identify which pair of shoes or which bag the person had seen online. Uh, so there's a lot of other benefits of, you know, actually turning around shoppers quicker, uh, etc. So I wouldn't go directly to e-commerce here, to be totally honest, because a lot of luxury brands that we talk to, they don't want that. They want the person to go to the store, and that's fine. Yeah. Unfortunately, the tech industry has applied its uh, uh, standards to the luxury industry rather than listening to the luxury industry, and I think this is a way of getting people to the store uh, so they can discover more products and get more, uh, maybe be upsold, etc. Thank you, Trevor. Yeah.